If you're watching this video, it's because you're interested in two things, texture painting and the add-on B Painter, which is an add-on to Blender. Now, this is not a tutorial. It is actually a review of B Painter, whether or not I would recommend this. And the second part of the video goes over the different functionalities of B Painter, so you can see, do I want to buy this? Do I not want to buy this? So let's go straight to the review as to whether or not I'd recommend B Painter for texture painting within Blender. The short answer is absolutely. This software takes the broken state of texture painting in Blender and brings it to the next generation, the current generation of texture painting. It's not a BPR texture painter. It is just solely different layer painting within Blender. So it's great for stylized painting for a little bit of touch-up work, but it's not a BPR different channel workflow. Now you can affect those different things, but Substance Painter is still king of the, the roost in that case. What this is really good at is basically letting you use Blender functionality such as banking maps and banking occlusion maps and bringing those, those textures in and then using those immediately within a texturing workflow. It is very fun, it's very easy to use and it doesn't break creativity, so it is a good software. Let's talk about the different functionality found within BPainter now. The first functionality is obviously the brushes. Now, this is your standard run-of-the-mill brushes. You have your default hard brush and your default soft brush. You have a hair brush, which only really helps illustrate that you have these different alphas or these brush textures. You have particle brushes, brush line, which is extremely useful. I remember Substance Painter didn't even have a, a good brush line for the longest time. You have a tiled brush that tiles a texture. You have an anchored brush, which is basically a drag, drag and drop. All of these are very reminiscent of very powerful software such as ZBrush or Substance Painter. You have a fill brush. Now this thing is very cool, but you can also do a gradient fill like this. This is great for adding value and contrast, and when mixed with a layer, um, different blend types and layers, you can get some really cool effects with this. So this brush fill is new, it's good, it's powerful and it's intuitive. You have a blur and a smudge brush used to high, high use. You have a clone brush and an eraser. So you have all these different brushes. Now what else you have is you have a lot of different settings found within this brush letting you change this. Um, let's just go ahead and go from start to, to bottom. You can save or restore or delete different brushes. You can have different stroke methods such as dot or airbrush or anchor. Airbrush is a very cool brush that basically layers on more and more the longer you hold down uh, the mouse. You have spacing. You have scatter to give it a, a different scattered effect. You have alpha, where you can change the intensity um, of the alpha or not. You have, you have symmetry settings. So you can do X painting, or you can do uh, symmetry along the Y axis. You have different projection settings. Now these things are extremely powerful because they let you um, basically limit what you see. I tend to avoid a occlude and cull not so much, but I do like to toggle off normal and put it at about 65 um, degrees or so. That will limit the amount of painting that's seen based on the direction of the face. You can play around with that and get the, the results that you want. You have a bleed option. Um, mine's currently set to eight, but if I set it down to zero like this, you can see that there's a seam along that edge. Cranking that back up to eight, and you can see that it basically um, gets rid of the seam because it's bleeding through the seam. The next thing B Painter brings to the table is the color panel. Now, <laughs> you might be thinking, ooh, a color panel, very, very cutting edge, but it's actually very, very good in the fact of its features are sleek and designed very well. So for example, you can enable the color wheel so you can pick very easily or you can do color palettes where you can create your own palette and export that out to later be loaded. But the most important thing is the color dropper. If you hit Alt, you can color drop, uh, color select, excuse me, and it selects the color of the texture, not the scene. So if you have a lot of shading, it's not gonna pick up the dark color of the shadows, but rather the texture color. This is huge. It's a small, small improvement that goes miles. So I love that. Next, you have the brush textures. This is simply your, basically your alphas if you work inside uh, Z, Z, ZBrush or Substance Painter. 
And the cool thing about this is you can load up different files full of textures and it goes into this. Stencils basically is your standard stencil and it lets you cover or mask different parts of the, the object. And again, same functionality as the brush textures. And last but not least is the layers. This is awesome. It has different blend options. It has different opacity. It has the ability to change resolutions of the different layers. So you can have one layer be very low resolution if you want to just quickly sketch something out. And then another layer to be extremely high resolution. You can reorder these, you can delete them, you can clear them. You can do a lot of different things with it. I have yet to find how to name the different layers, which seems kind of interesting to me, but you know, it is what it is. And I also found that that's pretty much the only difficulty. Now the cool thing too is you can change the different materials. So if your model is based into different materials, you can paint and mask using materials or UV layouts. Now there's some other features that I might not have talked about, such as the lazy mouse functionality, which is also a very useful thing. But it's pretty much that's the bread and butter of this. This isn't to say that this software is not without its faults. It's using Blender, which like we talked about, has horrible texturing. And so every once in a while you have some issues with seams or things like that. But overall, this is a very intuitive and very useful software. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And consider following us on Patreon or go to www.randomauterattack.com to see other, other videos and other cool content that we provide. Have a great day.